What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So I have recently been touching on a lot of the programs around the country, particularly in the SEC. So today I wanted to touch on the Tennessee football program heading into 2022, talk about why I think they have real hope for the future going forward, which is not something that you've really been able to say about them in the in you know in recent years and years past. So let's go ahead and get into the details of why I feel like Tennessee you know, has that hope going forward and why I think the fans should be excited for them. So to me, it all starts with Josh Heupel for Tennessee. They're a storied program that should be far more dominant and powerful than they currently are. But in recent years, the program has fallen on hard times due to a number of bad coaching hires, really ever since Phil Fulmer left the program in the early to mid-2000s. Jeremy Pruitt's tenure was particularly bad for Tennessee, because not only did he not have that much on-the-field success to speak of, he also had a lot of off-the-field issues, got the program deeply involved into some serious scandals with recruiting, breaking NCAA rules, and it really served to make Tennessee sort of a laughing stock around the SEC at the time. And it just was a, it was a bad look all the way around. And honestly, that was potentially Tennessee's lowest point ever, or at least lowest point in recent memory as a program. Then, though, in comes Josh Heupel, and he inherited a team with a severe lack of talent amidst an NCAA investigation, like I said, off-the-field scandal, plus an extreme amount of roster turnover to deal with. I mean, they had people leaving the program left and right. They had, you know, Henry Toto was the biggest name. He went to Alabama, but they had a huge exodus of talent from the portal from all those guys that were in Jeremy Pruitt's um, more recent signing classes and whatnot. Uh, and a lot of it was due to the off-the-field stuff, but a lot of it was just Tennessee didn't look like they were going anywhere. They kind of looked like a down program in a lot of ways, and so a lot of people didn't really want to stick around. And Heupel, you know, was left at that point incredibly short-handed, and he had just really nothing to work with. I mean, they didn't even really have a full roster of scholarship players, and the expectations around the program were extremely low, and for good reason. I mean, they shouldn't be high based off of all of those situations we just talked about. But Heupel immediately showed, you know, on the field promise with a high-powered explosive offense. Some consider it to be gimmicky, but hey, gimmick or not, Heupel drugged this team to a 7-6 and six record somewhat miraculously when you consider all the other surrounding things around the program. And you can make a real argument that they should have been 8-5 and five based on what the, that, that bowl game that they had against Purdue was just an absolute robbery by the refs in a lot of ways, in my opinion at least, and also in a lot of other people's opinion. So you're looking at 8-5 and five then. Then you add in one-score losses to Pitt and Ole Miss, and all of a sudden a 10-3 and three season was actually very close for Tennessee last year, which just, even to me who followed football really closely, just seems weird to say they just they don't seem like a team that should be at a 10 and 3 level right now and in some ways they're not but they were very very close to going 10 and 3 I mean a bowl game robbery and then two one score losses uh in the regular season in in the pit game in particular that was before they made the switch at quarterback and they just they were missing wide open touchdowns left and right and so they really should have done even better than they did last year in a lot of ways if you look at it now retrospectively but the expectations coming in weren't even really bowl game bowl game would have been you know best case scenario for them they weren't even really expected to do that and they ended up having a very surprisingly good season the only you know teams that really just they had clearly no shot against were the sec juggernauts in alabama and georgia and that's to be expected, and they showed some signs of life in those games as well. They still sort of overachieved, you know, comparatively to what you would have expected them to do in those games. Yes, they still got blown out, but at the very least, the team was thrilling to watch, even in those games. They scored um, early on Georgia, had a lead over them, which almost nobody else did that season. I think they put up like 24 on Alabama. Not, you know, obviously, they lost by like 20-something points in both games, so not good, but really, all things considered, not bad either. Uh, and like I said, it was a thrilling watch for the fans. The, you know, the fans finally had something fun to look forward to on the weekends after years of what had honestly become misery in Knoxville. Even with this one, even in some of the games that they lost, they were very exciting to watch. And obviously, that's not what the program wants. They're not here to have exciting games. They're here to win games. 
But this style of play does lend itself to being a lot more exciting. And they were winning games along with it. So I think it's a win-win in that situation. Then you look at the recruiting class for this this cycle. They hauled in the 17th ranked class in the nation this year, which was 8th in the conference, which is not great. But to be honest, it's also not horrible considering the main concern around Josh Heupel was an inability to recruit because he'd never really done it at this level as a head coach in particular. And with the program in the state that it was in, even making the top 20 is pretty good for them, all things considered, because, like I said, a lot of off-the-field scandal, nobody expects them to do much on the field, and with, you know, Hypo when he got there, it's not like he walked in and everybody's like, that's going to be a slam dunk hire. We really, you know, we know Hypo's going to hit it big. He was not a very popular hire, all things considered, and so to bring in the top 20 class is decent when, when you consider those things. Long term, though, they're going to need to improve this if Tennessee wants to compete for the SEC again like they used to in, in, you know, in years past instead of just being a good team that, are, that can win you know, 9, 10 games a year. Which brings me to the next biggest question mark around the Tennessee program, in my opinion, going forward, and that is just what exactly is Josh Heupel? Is he the next great SEC head coach who's going to take Tennessee to the playoff in a few years? Or is he more in the vein of a Dan Mullen type where he's always going to put out elite offenses and he can take middling talent and turn it into 9-10 win seasons fairly consistently? His teams always have a chance to win whatever game they're in due to the high-powered offense. And they're always a very exciting team to watch, but never really going to elevate the team and the program to that next level where you're consistently competing for national championships like Kirby Smart's done at Georgia or like Nick Saban has obviously done for the longest period of time in Alabama. That, to me, is the big question around Heupel, and therefore around Tennessee. Is he a guy that's going to make him very exciting and a very good but not great program, or is he the guy to take them over the top and, and make them a dominant SEC program again? It's way too early to tell at this point, and anybody who thinks that the Tennessee program is incapable of competing at that level of the sport again, regardless of the head coach, because there are those people out there who do legitimately think that Tennessee is just not a program that is equipped to compete at the national level like that, they're just wrong. I mean, there's no other way to put it. They are just wrong. Yes, they have been incredibly down recently, but their fan base is 100% bought in, and it is a large fan base. Tennessee has all of the resources you could ask for facility-wise and funding-wise to compete with the very best around. They have an outstanding stadium. They have great program tradition. I mean, this is a program that has no reason to not be able to compete with the Georgias and the Floridas and the Alabamas of the world other than the coaching and administration that has been running the program over the last decade to two decades, really. Um, If they were to find the right guy to lead this program, all of the raw tools, all the raw materials are there for this to be a legitimate national-level competitor and contender year in and year out. And there's, like I said, there's no reason that Tennessee can't or shouldn't be competing at the top level of the sport other than poor program management from their administration and their staff. Now, it's going to take some time before I think Tennessee can really compete on the national level again, or at least at a playoff level, even if things do go that way, even if Heupel is that guy for them. Uh, And I'm not saying if he is or isn't, like I said, we don't know yet. But even if he is, it's going to take some time to get to that level of a program. But that's to be expected, especially when you consider how down they've been. It's not a situation like when Kirby Smart showed up at Georgia, you have one year's the you know your new introductory year, and then you make the national championship. That's not what Heupel has inherited. Even if he is a Kirby Smart level head coach, that's not the program he's inherited. It's going to take time to build them up regardless. But they do seem to be ahead of schedule already under Heupel after how last season went for them. And so let's do an early look ahead at their schedule next season, where they stack up, and and you know what I think about how they're gonna you know play and fare against most of their opponents next year. Um, so Tennessee begins with Ball State, and then in week three they play Akron, and in week eight they play UT Martin. And so there's three guaranteed wins for them. We don't need to talk about those. Their other out of conference game is on the road at Pitt, who narrowly defeated them last year at home. I think Pitt's probably going to take a pretty noticeable step back next year without Kenny Pickett, and Tennessee should, in theory, be better next season with more scholarship players, another recruiting class, year two of their coaching staff being there, etc. 
I think Tennessee probably wins this game, most likely, but it could go either way. It's a losable game for them. It's just likely going to be a win, not in the same category as those first three that I mentioned now. Now, getting into conference play, Tennessee draws LSU on the road, and then they play Alabama every year out of the West. Uh, they get them at home, but eh, it's still, they get a, those teams are in back-to-back weeks, too. You go at LSU, then home Alabama. It's just about as unlucky as you could possibly get for your scheduling purposes. They won't be as good of a team or even nearly as good of a team as Alabama next season. But just like last year, they may be able to scare them some, you know, make it an interesting, exciting game early on. Bama will pull away late, though. I don't see Tennessee really being too, too competitive in that game. The LSU game, though, will be interesting because, as I said in my LSU video on the channel, LSU is a massive wild card who could end up as a 6-win team or a 10-win team. There's just no telling at this point with LSU. And currently, I would lean LSU here, especially because they're at home, and at home for LSU is a huge advantage. But Tennessee could pull out a win here. I think it would be an upset. I don't think it would be crazy. I definitely don't think it would be some unheard-of occurrence for them to pull this out. But currently, slight edge to LSU there. Then as far as in the SEC East is concerned, I think Tennessee is noticeably better than Vandy, and they're also better than Missouri in my opinion, but not by a huge margin like it will be with Vandy. And then you hit the part of the East that gets really, really muddy, and that's the Florida, South Carolina, Kentucky, and then obviously Tennessee portion of it. Any of these four teams could finish in any order in my opinion next year. They're all so close to each other heading into next season. I personally think Kentucky's going to take a small step back next season, and not because they're actually going to be a worse team. I think they're going to be basically the same team they were this past year, but I think that Florida, South Carolina, and Tennessee are all going to be much improved heading into next season. I'm going to wait to make my real and total predictions for everybody later on, closer to the start of the season, but for now, I would say I would lean Tennessee over Florida and over Kentucky, but I would lean South Carolina over Tennessee for now. Regardless, all of those games are going to be winnable games for, for, for Tennessee. They're all going to be very close games for Tennessee. They're also just as losable as they are winnable. Just because of how competitive the SEC is going to be next year, it's always competitive, but I think really everybody in the West minus, or everybody in the East, I should say, minus Vandy, is on the rise. They all feel good about their coaching staffs. They're all sort of climbing in an upward trajectory. The West, that is very true as well. Um, But focusing on the East here, the entire SEC is going to just be absolutely absurd next season, I feel like. The only East team that is well ahead of Tennessee right now is Georgia, in my opinion. All of the other teams on the schedule are about even with them. Um, Obviously, Alabama is also way ahead of them, but I mean, out of the East, all the other teams are basically even with them. The only teams that I think it would be a real long shot for them to beat are, like I said, Georgia and Alabama, which would make a 10-2 type of season for them. Now, I'm not predicting that by any means, but it's not at all unreasonable to suggest that they could do it, which is a step up for Tennessee as a program from recent years where they 10-2 was not even an afterthought for them. Now, this is a program in Tennessee, I think, that actually strangely parallels the South Carolina program. They're both in very similar situations going forward right now. It'll be very interesting to see which one of those two rising programs comes out on top in the long run. Now, Tennessee could also lose to all the teams like LSU, South Carolina, Florida, Pitt, Kentucky, even a team like Missouri. Uh, And then you're looking at, you know, six-ish win season again. But I'm not predicting that that's going to happen either. I think in all likelihood, Tennessee will fall somewhere in the middle of those two win totals, somewhere between six and ten. Not much of a prediction, I know. I'm going to do that, like I said, later on. Um, But that's not really the point of this video. Uh, The point of this video is to say that Tennessee, as a program, should have hope. And as a fan base, they should have hope for the future. At least much more hope than they have had in recent years. They can legitimately say they're excited about the on-field product already, which is huge for them. They can also say that there's a clear path forward for the future for the program to continue to improve as a whole, which is another thing that is absolutely huge for them. It's not something that's been true for them in years past. And it's not even just next season either where I think Tennessee should have hope for a great season, but in years beyond that. you know, Right now they're in the mix in the SEC East with everybody except for Georgia, so if they can keep building and improving, there's no reason they can't get to the point where they are competing with somebody like Georgia 
or somebody like in Alabama. I'm not saying that they're going to, but they have all of the resources and history and program capability to do that, and they seem to be on an upward trajectory right now. So that would be your top end. That would be your goal. Nothing holding you back from that but themselves at this point. Uh, Like I said, though, they aren't there yet. But I guarantee you they are a lot closer to competing at that level now than anybody thought they would be at this time last year when they had just hired Hypo when he was heading into his first spring practice and all. Uh, at Tennessee, nobody had any expectations for them. They dramatically exceeded expectations in year one. Very excited to see what they do in year two. But with all that being said, that'll do it for this video. Let me know down below what you guys think about the Tennessee program going forward, if they should be hopeful about their future, and also what you guys think about Hypel long term. Is he the guy to take Tennessee over the top, or is he the guy that's just going to field very good but not great teams for them? Also, if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and leave a like because it helps out the channel tremendously. And subscribe for more cautious blog content like this in the future as I will to continue to upload regularly going forward. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.